Shalom to all of Yisrael and those fearing Elohim, and welcome back. Till when, O Yisrael, would set apart Eliyahu in your midst. Uh, so it's been a little while since I made a video, so I just wanted to check in, uh, say shalom to everybody as much as possible in today's day and age. Um, so I uh, haven't been studying as much as I would like to have. Um, it's tough being a slave, you know. Um, excuse me. But what I wanted to talk about right now is a lot of people are talking and, and they're saying that it's... it's um, you know, Passover's coming and, you know, everybody gets into the spirit of festivities. Um, you know, as I have read further in the scriptures, I bring clarity uh, to what's being discussed in the Basuras Hagula. And the Torah that ha that is being put down is more along the lines of what it says in the Greek as dogma dogmas okay so uh you know there's many laws that my relatives have that go into great depth um about associations you know you know who's kosher to uh be associated with who's not you know who's in the circle who's out and a lot of what's being discussed in the in the basuras hagula is actually um, in that discretion and in that context it must be interpreted so. If not, you're lost. And that's where Christianity grossly loses its way is because they think that, you know, the emissaries are saying to do away with the Torah. They did no such thing. Um, it's a poor reflection to use Torah when actually it was, um, what's it, uh, Nemos, our... Um, it's law or a precept or a statute or a prescriptive. Um, so again, a lot of the things that are being put down, for instance, in the book of Galatians, um, when Kepha is talking to Shaul and he's basically putting him down in public is because the Jews have a law that a Jew was not to associate or eat dinner with one from the Goyim. And that's the law that's being disputed. Uh, another law that's being disputed is if somebody comes into belief today and you walk through the doors, are we going to make you be circumcised immediately? Now, if you go to any Messianic synagogue or, or any Jewish shul, they'll do this today. The very first time that you sit down and talk with them, they're going to discuss the circumcision. Now, the circumcision that Shaul is discussing is not the circumcision of the penis. It's the circumcision of the life, of bo the body of sins. Okay, I, so listen, you have to read for yourself. And I, I, I'm preparing studies, but they, they take a long time, especially when you have a lot of other things going on. Um, and, and recently I've been kind of worn down. I, I, haven't, uh, I haven't been very healthy, per se. So I have things that I have to get the log out of my own eye uh, in order to help with the speck and the brothers. But I know that I'll be provided for, so this is why I'm able to do his work. Um, so, again, what we're, what we're talking about is the true reflection and context of the Basuras Hagula. And so, um, that, you know, again, what, what, what's being stated is that when somebody comes into belief from Ephraim and he's coming from the Goyim, um, obviously the Ten Commandments, and then we have fro four prohibitions. We have four prohibitions, okay? So the four prohibitions is do not eat meat slaughtered unto idols, um, do not drink the blood, I was, I was, um, do not strangle the meat, and do not fornicate. So those are the four uh, prohibitions that you must do right off the rip. Uh, but this is, this is going against paganism 101. I mean, if you believe in the Bible in any way, shape, or form, these four things shouldn't be a whole lot to ask, but you'd be absolutely shocked how many people are not even doing these four prohibitions. 
Now, for instance, the spirit of Eliyahu is upon you. By all means, if Jesus is the mighty one and he's Elohim, then by all means, worship him. Now, if Hashem, if he is Elohim, or any of the Baalim are Elohim, then by all means, worship him. But if Yahweh Elohim, mighty one of the universe, mighty one of Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, the one that spoke to Moshe from the burning bush, is Elohim, then please serve him. Now do not be led astray by miracles, signs, and wonders, as if there's something great about that. Remember, Moshiach says, Woe to you, Korazim and Khafarnum, because if you had repented, uh, if, if the message that was uh, said to you was said in Zor or Zidon, they would have thrown on ashes and sackcloth a long time ago. Okay? There's nothing worse than receiving a miracle or a wonder and not repenting and bringing your life into righteousness. The Holy Spirit is a choice. Now, yes, it's divine and it comes down and a wind blows and it falls upon whoever it falls upon. Thus, Shaul prophesied with the prophets. Okay? But we're saying that be holy, answer your calling, walk worthily of the master. And we are free from the Talmud in order to live in, the, in Elohim's Torah, the true spirit of the Torah and not an oldness of your prescriptive letters. That's true righteousness. That's what he's discussing. He's putting down these teachings of the Jews. He's, he's putting down their traditions. And so if the Messiah were to return today, they'd kill him again. And no, it's not Jesus. It's Yahushua HaMashiach, the Rabbi Melech HaMashiach. That's the Messiah. Okay, but the, the, the one that they will receive, the one that you will receive, I'm speaking directly to you, is one that will be and give you everything that you want. He'll be a Goal in the Mishnah and Gemara. He'll be studied. He'll be learned. He'll give you everything you want. He's going to have to fit your bill in order to be the Messiah. But the Messiah doesn't have to answer to you. The Messiah is greater than you. Get that through your thick skull. Um, so in, in, in discussing this, again, they're going to say that it's Passover's coming and it's the spirit of... Um, a festivity okay uh, it's the spirit of festivity but in all actuality what I call it is robbing season okay we're getting ready to see a lot of robbers in a den of thieves okay Elohim is not with you in this matter your festivals are dung before me says the mighty one of Israel A lot of you are making a lot of money off of my father's word and holiness and righteousness. Not one, not two, but three tithe. And you tell my people peace and you make them pay for dinner as if they were going to the Marriott and you're feeding them chips from Kirkland and running out. And you're charging people seven, eight hundred dollars a head to come and sit under a tent. It's ridiculous. Now we're gonna we're gonna get into something right here. Get your Bibles and with no further ado, uh, let's say a prayer and we'll get into we'll get into holiness. Uh, Abba Father, Yahushua Hamashiach, Ruach Hakodesh, we do pray for a brief revelation in your word. Uh, we pray to receive knowledge, wisdom, and insight so that we can see what is true, what is good, what is pure, and what is righteous. And we pray this on the Rebbe Melech HaMoshiach. Amen. Genesis chapter 13. Oh, excuse me. What am I talking? Um, Devarim chapter 13. Okay. It's good to be back with you. Though. I, I, I haven't had, I haven't done anything because I haven't had anything to say. I mean, uh, if you know that old saying, if you don't have nothing to say, just keep your mouth closed. And I, I want to say something holy. I don't want to say something out of my, my belly. Uh, most of these guys that do a show every week are just talking out of their belly and out of their appetite. 
Uh, they don't even care about righteousness and doctrine anymore. It's just all about money. Um, okay, so let's see here. Okay, here we go. So don't mind me. I'm going to be looking down a little bit, but I am with you. It's actually chapter 14. And it's going to be verse 22. So Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 22. That's where we're going to start. And it says, You shall tithe without fail all the yield of your grain that the field brings forth year by year. Hang on, let me... I'm going to actually get it in a different verse here. Hang on a second. A uh, different reflection. Um, excuse me for one second. Okay. 14. Okay. okay, so here it goes. Um, set aside a tithe, a tenth of all that your fields produce each year. Then go to the one place where Yahweh, your Elohim, is chosen to be worshipped. And there in his presence eat the tithes of your grain, wine, and olive oil, and the firstborn of your cattle and of your sheep. Do this so that you may learn to honor Yahweh your Elohim always. If the place of worship is too far from your home for you to carry the tithe of the produce that Yahweh has blessed you with, then do this. Sell your produce and take the money with you to the one place of worship. And get this. Spend it on whatever you want, beef, lamb, wine, and strong drink. And there, in the presence of Yahweh, your Elohim, you and your families are to eat and enjoy yourselves. So do you hear what's taking place with the tithe? You're bringing it to the one place of worship. That's the most important piece of this puzzle right now. And we're going to enjoy one another. So he that brought too much did not have too much. And he that brought too little did not have too little. We all are sharing in the fruitfulness of the nation of Israel. Everybody's going to be blessed in this gathering. And most importantly, the name of the Elohim of Israel is going to be praised. Okay, so verse 27. Do not neglect the Lewaim who live in your towns. They have no property of their own. And here it is. This is another tithe. At the end of every third year, bring the tithe of all your crops and store it in your towns within your own municipalities. This food is for the Lewain, since they have no property and they own no property, and for the foreigners, orphans, and widows who live in your towns. They are to come and get all they need. Do this, and Yahweh your Elohim will bless you in everything you do. This third year tithe, again, is for the sustenance of the people that are in the covering of the nation of Israel. Uh, the stranger, the widow, the orphan, uh, the Lewaim, the Levites. These are receiving of the tithe. So we see that bring the tithe into the storerooms and let Elohim be praised. But a lot of you are bringing it to your pockets and you're saying that Elohim told you to do that, and you're also preaching peace. You are a false prophet, and Elohim is getting tired of your shenanigans. It's about time that you face up to what you're doing. Either repent and live, or be striked down. Elohim is not going to bear with you forever. He doesn't receive your festivals. You have people doing all sorts of sin. Why don't you start there, and then, see, the, listen, this is a verse and, and let you find it on your own. We're all big boys here. We can do that. Let no man bother you about what to eat or to drink or about new moons or Sabbaths. For this is a shadow of what's to come. But the body, the reality, the present is of Messiah and is Messiah. The Messiah is going to restore the nation of Israel where we will be able to go home and go to the one place of worship, not wherever your little heart desires in Mississippi and Missouri and Oak Ridge, North Carolina, and you're going to all these different resorts and, 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 and retreat centers and praising the name of Yahweh abroad. 
What is wrong with you? No. If we couldn't even do it within our own municipalities within the promised land, what makes you think that we could just do it all abroad? Now listen, if the day is special to you, then let it be special in your eyes. And if it's common to another, then let it be common to him. First off, pick which calendar you're going to follow. Enough people argue about that. Choose holiness, righteousness, okay? Love one another. Be a light instead of tearing one another down over these stupid things. And first off, you're getting rich off the tribes, and that's going to get you plundered. You're going to get hurt for doing that, okay? So there's more teachings that we're going to get into uh, and, and, and I'm feeling motivated right now. It's about 9, 12 right now on uh, Monday night. I'm going to get in bed here shortly. But I also wanted to share another one that I've been doing. Okay. So I wanted to give it more... The Basaras Hagula or the New Testament is a Jewish book written by Jews, for Jews, in the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, for all. Everybody is blessed by the teachings of the Yaudim, but you must interpret them from that standpoint. So who he's talking about, these ones sneakily brought in to spy out the freedom of the Torah, is the Pharisees and their traditions. They want to enslave us in their traditions. And everybody looks at them and they believe that they're holy and they're following. Not everybody, but most. And then they come in and they're talking about the Kabbalah and all this other stuff and all this mystic stuff. And yay, it's so wonderful. No, it's not so wonderful. It's awful. Okay. Uh, Colossians chapter 2, verse 1. Uh, he says, For I wish you to know what a great struggle I have for you and those in Laodicea, and for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh in order that their hearts might be encouraged, being knit together in love to all the riches of the entire confirmation of understanding, to a true knowledge of the secret of Elohim and of the Father and of, the, and of Moshiach, in whom are hidden the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And this I say that so that no one deceives you with enticing words, like uh, Reb Tavier Singer and Rebbe Freed, um, all these ones, I mean, they are smooth and they're charming and they, you would not be the first one that they turned over sideways. They, they are good. But let me tell you something. They are not following the Torah. They are not keeping Torah. Okay, uh, verse five. For though I am absent in the flesh, yet I am with you in spirit. Rejoicing to see your good order and the steadfastness of your belief in Messiah. Therefore, as you accepted Moshiach, Yahushua, the master, walk in him. So it's saying, if you accept Moshiach, the Rebbe Melech HaMoshiach, walk righteously, walk in him. Put on the perfect man of Moshiach. Walk righteously as a clean lamb, a pure offering before Elohim. Not in deceit and you know filthy gain, which is idolatry, which we're going to get into. Um, but listen, he says, having been rooted and built up in Moshiach and established in the belief, as you were taught, overflowing in it with thanksgiving. See to it that no one makes a prey of you through philosophy and empty deceit. Here it is, according to the tradition of men and the elementary matters of the world and not according to Moshiach. So these Jews will tell you that you're slaved, or you're saved, excuse me, because you're really slaved, but they'll say that you're saved by keeping their traditions, getting circumcised immediately, keeping the festivals, keeping their calendar, uh, watching the moon with them to see, to see the rotation, you know, uh, you know um, uh, different things that they read. Uh, my, my mind was stalling on me. Um, they have a lot of readings that they do, and I'm, I'm, I'm well aware of some of the things that they do, and they're, I don't know where they get it from because I don't see it in the Torah anywhere, but that's a, we won't go down that rabbit hole. Um, uh, Colossians chapter 2, verse 9, because in the Messiah dwells all the completeness of Elohim, 
and you have been made complete in him who is the head of all principality and authority. In him you were also circumcised with a circumcision not made with hands in the putting off of the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Messiah. So this circumcision that we're discussing is not the penis. It's the, it's the body of sins. It's, it's, it's uh, the lust, the eyes, the appetite of sin. And it's, we were dead in our sins. And he says, and you being dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, the body of sins, has been made has been he has made alive together with him having forgiven you all trespasses having blotted out which was written by hand against us by the dogmas so the traditions of the yahudim they are many they're, they're speed bumps that are that are supposed to protect the torah but really they do massive harm they don't even believe in the torah anymore they believe in their traditions and they love them. The, the, quote, end quote. My forefathers were mighty ones, said Rabbi Sonnenschein in Waddenbury, Connecticut. I believe it's Rosedale. That boy was saying that. Okay, now pay attention to dogma. Because these dogmas are written rules, laws, and precepts that they have in place. The Yaudim. The laws that he's putting down is not of the Torah. It's of the Yaudim. It's of the Pharisee. And here it is again. So look at the Messiah, having stripped the principalities and authorities, he made a public display of them and he prevailed over them in it. So when they killed him, they thought that, aha, we got rid of him and the kingdom is ours. Not so fast there. Not so fast. Elohim prevailed over you. He is successful. That's why you and your people have been destroyed now. For thousands of years, you've gone through terrible things. Because you refused to repent. And then you would dwell in the promised land and he would bring us home. But you say, aha, I have riches and gold and we have peace and we celebrate. And we have no reason to cry. So look, verse 16. Let no one therefore judge you in eating or in drinking or in respect of a festival or new moons or Sabbaths, which are a shadow of what is to come. But the body is the Messiah, the, the reality, the presence. So when people bother me about these calendars, and it's not the first time that people talk about Hillel too, and he's an authority, and he's the Sanhedrin. I'm like, well, first off, the Sanhedrin is 70 elders, not just one man. And so why do you allow Yahudim, who don't believe in the Rebbe Melech HaMoshiach, to be an authority in your life? You're wrong. You're immensely wrong. And a lot of you make this authoritative that these people have to celebrate your calendar or they're going to hell. They're not saved. And then I go to these festivals and I hear people saying that they're saved because they're keeping the festival on this precise day. And it makes me sick to my stomach. I can't even be around it. I'd rather be alone than dwell in unrighteousness. I'll stay outside the camp like Moshe and Yahushua ben Nun. I'm just fine. And then, like I said, uh, Elohim lifts me up. He shows me that one can make a thousand run. I'm not afraid. My time has come. So, uh, you know, keep me in warm regard. By all means, if you believe in Yahweh and not Jesus and not Hashem and not Allah and not Buddha and whoever else these boys are praying to, we don't believe in none of them. We believe in Yahweh Elohim the maker and creator of the heavens and the earth. And we suffer now. Now is not a time of peace. If you're in peace, good for you. Enjoy it. Or repent and suffer with me for the name of Moshiach. Okay, listen, those are two very big revelations. If you receive it, then good, it's yours. It's sent from above. It ain't mine. But these are the true reflections of what he is saying. Now, is Shaul telling us not to circumcise our, our babies? Kahas ba shalom. Elohim forbid. No, of course not. That wouldn't make any sense. You have to look at it contextually. Now, listen. 
Rome wasn't built in a day. It's actually still being built. Things take time. Elohim hasn't come yet because he doesn't want to see people perish. Start with the Shabbat. Come into holiness. The Shabbat is the doorway. Come into holiness. Come and study. Listen to Moshe being read. The man of Elohim. Excuse me. Moshe was Elohim on earth. The spirit of Elohim dwelt upon Moshe. Once you listen to Moshe and you hear more and more, you'll understand uh, the sign and seal of belief. You'll understand the covenant. You'll, under, you'll understand the covenant made in addition to the covenant. Okay? Which is the promised land. So there's many things we do when we're in the promised land as a nation. We are not there. We do not have the Lewaim. We do not have the sons of Zerak, uh, the Kohanim. We do not have the Ba'is Hamikdash. We, there's a lot of things that are missing right now. And we're waiting in the hope and expectation that was given to us. Okay? So once again, I do say, uh, Baruch Atah to Yahweh Elohim, Mighty One of the Heavens and the Earth. Blessings to you uh, in your house. Uh, again, I, I'm hoping to make a teaching uh, a little bit more in depth about the tide. Uh, uh, the minor reflection of false prophets. And we're also going to do the book of Galatians. Uh, a brother of mine, him and I, have been studying it together. Uh, and it's been immensely holy. But I will say that you need to know the book of Romain. Uh, you need to know the book of Romans before you can do that. And so I'm going to get my son an apple here. And I'm going to have one myself. I'm trying to eat more raw foods. Uh, try to keep the old heart healthy. Um, and, and, and pray that Yahweh be kind to me. Because uh, there's been many struggles in my family uh, with heart issues uh, from both sides. So uh, if you pray to Yahweh Elohim, pray for me that I remain righteous in integrity and walk upright. And I shall pray the same for you. Blessings in the Rebbe Yahushua HaMashiach. Amen.